Okay, welcome back. Um, in the Tanya class, we're going to uh, learn chapter 38. Um, that I actually started with uh, on Friday and, and Shabbos. Today is already the third essay within chapter 38. But I'll just give you the gist of uh, Friday and uh, Shabbos. Uh, the discussion on the Friday Tanya which is the beginning of chapter 38. Uh, well, the chapter in general will emphasize the need uh, to balance action-oriented mitzvahs with proper kavana, with proper intent, intention, and soulful devotion. Um, these uh, two dimensions represent the body and soul of the mitzvah. Hence, you need both. You need the body of the mitzvah, the action, and you need the soul of the mitzvah, the intent of the mitzvah. So mitzvahs are not to rectify the soul. The intention of, meaning the reason why God gave us the commandments was not to rectify the soul, because the soul needs no rectification. Rather, they are performed through action and speech to draw forth divine light on the body. So action and speech to draw divine light on the body. And so the uh, takeaway from Friday's Tanya was your actions have a body and soul. The dry action and the heart behind it. The dry action is the body of it and the heart behind it is the soul of it. The dry action is important it affects the physical because you're using the physical to do the dry action. But without soul, it is dead action. It exists, but it is without luster, without desire, without excitement. Then Shabbos uh, Tanya was uh, this portion of, of Shabbos. And Tanya was speaking about a similar, uh, continuing with the same vein, with the same discussion, illustrating the intent versus action, um, two components of the mitzvah, with the metaphor of soul versus body. So we must understand that although both body and soul stem from the from divine origin, mm -hmm. body and soul stem from divine origin, mm -hmm. and are both in this world, body and soul are in this world, uh, sharing certain properties, including the concealment of the godly source, and are nonetheless very different in their degree of vitality. So although body and soul are sharing a lot of common things, both are came, coming from a godly divine origin, and both are experiencing concealment from godliness, but they nevertheless, they are nonetheless very different in their degree of vitality, meaning the vitality that comes to the soul is much greater, much higher than vitality that comes to the body. The takeaway from Saturday's Tanya, from Shabbos Tanya, the many types of creation don't indicate many sources of energy, God forbid. Many things are in this world, many creatures, many created beings, but does not mean that they have many sources of energy. They all come from the same, from one source. Many types of creation don't indicate many primary sources of energy, God forbid. Rather, there is one God with many levels of contraction of His divine energy. So that was uh, Friday and Shabbos in short. Uh, today's Tanya. Um, previously, Tanya began discussing the concept of Kavana. Uh, whoever follows us, it's uh, on uh, page 64 in the Chayenu. I believe you can also, if you don't have the Chayenu, you can download it online, um, but page 64 and chapter 38. So previously, Tanya began discussing the concept of Kavana, which means intent, mindfulness, and proper intention when uh, performing a mitzvah. The Kavana, this Kavana, Tanya explains, is the soul of the mitzvah, uh, causing a greater amount of divine energy to flow into the mitzvah greater amount of divine energy to flow into the mitzvah. Mm -hmm. There are, however, varying 
grades of divine energy which flow into the world. Today's lesson, just as the four distinct categories of, of life, we have four distinct categories of life, which is the mineral, the plant, animal, and human, um, very greatly vary greatly in the degree of vitality they possess. Each one has a different level of vitality, despite their equal concealment of their divine origin. The plant, the mineral, is concealed from his a divine energy that gives it life is concealed from it. And similarly, when it comes to the plant, and similarly, when it comes to the animal, and also when it comes to a human being. Despite the equal concealment of the divine energy, they, are, they vary greatly in the degree of vitality they possess. Similarly, similarly so, is the contrast of a mitzvah done merely in action versus one infused with intent and meaning, with intent and kavan, uh, which we also called mindfulness. Uh, the, in the Hebrew, Kibaguf Gashmi, In the physical body of a living creature, and in an absolutely inanimate being, such as stones or earth, so we're speaking about physical body, and then the highest level, uh, which is the, we said the human, and then we're speaking about the lowest one, the mineral, and an absolutely inanimate being, such as stones or earth, in which no life or spirituality are apparent since they lack even the power of growth. A stone, we always made a stone. Now, the ray of the divine creative power is in a state of unparalleled contraction. So think about the divine energy that would come, that would flow into a rock and the divine energy that comes into a human being. The ray of the divine creative power is in a state of unparalleled contraction. When it comes to the vitality that goes into a rock, into a mineral, it's so minute. So much so that it doesn't even have the power of growing. Um, regarding the question of uh, Mr. Cohen, uh, when it comes to uh, don't do's, negative mitzvahs, um, there is tremendous um, power to them. It says that uh, the reward for a, a don't do mitzvah is actually, in many cases, greater than the reward for a positive mitzvah. So, for example, if you had a uh, drive to, uh, to do, God forbid, to transgress, and you have an opportunity to do it, and you didn't do it, the reward, the tremendous amount of uh, excitement that you create in the higher world, in Hashem, uh, the light that Hashem has, that you had the, uh, the opportunity to transgress and you did not, it brings so much more joy than when you just did a mitzvah. So sometimes the negative mitzvahs create tremendous, more, a tremendous uh, power, tremendous flow into the world, much more than they would, a positive mitzvah would, would uh, cause. I think also when it comes to a negative mitzvah, when you don't do it, it has to be intention. Meaning I want to do it, I'm capable of doing it, and uh, I stopped myself from doing it. So the, the, the fact that you um, somewhat subjugated your inclination, it creates so much more, so much excitement in the higher world. And the expression of the Zohar, he writes that the glory of God is, is now spread all over the world. In the higher world, a tremendous amount of of uh, satisfaction and gratification to God, and obviously there is a response because you brought such excitement in the higher world that you had the money, you have the the potency, you have the capability, and you have the opportunity to to transgress, and you didn't. You create tremendous amount of joy. So the, there is a great tremendous amount of vitality that comes back by by not transgressing. So going back to our subject, so when it comes to the mineral, the, the such minute energy that goes into it, that it doesn't even have the power to grow. When it comes to vegetation, the, uh, 
ray that comes to it, it's not as contracted as minerals because the plants are still growing. So you see some kind of life in them. You see growth. V'derech, mm klal, -hmm. in general, there's four, uh, four levels are divided into four. All things in this world are divided into four levels. We have the daimim, we have the inanimate, we have the vegetation, what we call mineral, then we have the vegetable, the growing, and then we have the chai, the animal, and then we have the medabu, then we have the speaker, us. All these, now these four levels that are existing in the world are corresponding to the four letters, to the four letter name of, uh, of Hashem. The, the name of uh, God's name is Yud, the letter Yud, the letter He, and the letter Vav, and the letter He. So four letter name corresponding to the four levels within creation that we said mineral, vegetable, animal, and the human. Each of these four categories receives its vitality from one of the four letters. So either we receive our vitality from the Yud, the first one, or we receive our vitality from the He, we will see. But each one, each uh, category within creation receives, we have four categories, four uh, letters in the name of God, where they receive their vitality, each one receives from a different letter. <laughs> Just as the illumination and the flow of vitality found in the mineral and vegetable bears no comparisons, no comparison or likeness to the illumination and flow of vitality closed in animals and, uh, and men. What's the difference? In minerals, nothing grows. Veg vegetation, something grows, but they can't move comes to animals, they also move around. And then you have the human beings, they're also capable of speaking. So since in the latter two categories of animal and humans, it is clearly apparent that they are alive. The fact that they can go and move places. Although everyone, although in all four categories, a divine animating light is the same in terms of the concealment of countenance. We all in... Whatever category you are in, you are not exposed to uh, godliness, to the to the vitality, to the energy that comes to you. With all of us, it's all enclosed in the garment of Noga, which means it's a garment that has energy that we can use either for positivity or for God forbid the opposite. None, in none of these categories is, is it apparent that their vitality is actually godliness. Yet despite this equality, the vitality of inanimate beings and plants is incomparable to that of animals and men. So although we have certain things that we are, uh, so to speak, compatible with uh, the minerals. So minerals and us, we both, our vitality is concealed. We don't see directly how Hashem is giving us life. Some people may be capable of seeing it uh, in their um, in their physical eyes, but uh, we're using faith, we're using uh, understanding, but not, not something that you see. So we are sharing common uh, uh, denominators between us and the minerals. Similarly, there is no comparison. That's really the point that we're coming into. The difference between doing a mitzvah, a dry mitzvah, doing mitzvah without uh, intent, without contemplation, without meditation, without mindfulness, and just doing it, and doing mitzvah with mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So there's no comparison or like or likeness between the illumination and flow of the blessed Ain Sof, the, which we refer to the infinite light of God, meaning the inner aspect of his will, without concealment of countenance, and with no with and with no garment whatsoever. Imagine godly flow comes with no with no concealment whatsoever. As it radiates in and is closed within the mitzvahs radiate and enclose within the mitzvahs consisting of action, whether actual action or mitzvahs performed through speech with also considered action and verbal articulation, 
which is re regarded as actual action, as mentioned above, when performed without kavana. The illumination of the Ein Sof found in these mitzvahs bears no likeness or comparison with the superior illumination and flow of the blessed Ein Sof light radiating and closed in the kavana of the mitzvahs of action. Uh -huh. Meaning, man's intention to attach himself to God by fulfilling his will is expressed in the mitzvah since he and his will are one. So what is the kavana? What do you have to have in mind? That this is God's will. That's it. Hashem wants me to do this. That's why I'm doing it. You're not a robot. You're thinking before you do the mitzvah, why am I doing it? Because Hashem wants me to do it. And when I do it, I'm connecting to Him. Meaning man's intention to attach himself to God by fulfilling his will, doing what he wants, therefore I'm attaching myself to him, as expressed in the mitzvah, since he and his will are one, Hashem and his will are one. The same thing with us. Our inner, most inner power is our will. Similarly, when it comes to the um, a contemplation, of when it comes to prayer, the recital of Shema, when we have to, the, the first verse of Shema, uh, you have to, to do it with intention. The whole davening should be done with mindfulness, but primarily the uh, the Shema, if you didn't do it with with uh, mindfulness, you did not fulfill your obligation. Similarly, with regard to Kavana in prayer, the recital of Shema and its blessings, and in other blessings, where through one's Kavana in them, he attaches his thought and intellect to God. So we see that by us a, fulfilling the mitzvahs with intention, with, with mindfulness, we're capable of bringing so much more uh, into this world, we're able to affect this world in so, so much uh, a superior way than doing the mitzvah without intention. So the takeaway from today's Tanya, action-based commandments are the will of God. But taking a moment when performing a commandment, to, when performing a mitzvah, performing a commandment to contemplate that you are performing the commandment to connect to God, is the life of the commandment. That's the neshama, famous saying that you do a mitzvah without kavana is like body without a soul. So the the life of the commandment is your intention, and it's not that complicated. I'm not talking about a kabbalistic. Uh, Kavonis, Kabbalistic uh, uh, con uh, contemplations. Talking about basic uh, intent before doing the mitzvah, that Hashem is uh, commanding me to do this mitzvah, and by doing it, I'm, I'm connecting, attaching myself to Him. Bochim Tiu should all be blessed. Thank you for listening. I'm going to make another uh, short video on the, uh, on the Pasha and, uh, and Yaakov. The narratives of the Gemara. We'll see you soon.